Wish I could say I was finally over you. Ready for donation. Waiting for the pickup. I just donated all my stuff. It's all in that truck over there. Bye bye stuff. Good morning, happy Monday. Welcome to my week of chaos. This morning I had my last ever workout at Buzz Gym in Oxford. I love this gym. If you come to Oxford, absolutely highly recommend the gym. It has been my anchor over the last few months. I am probably twice the age of most of the people who go to Buzz Gym, but Still, I still felt like there was a feeling of community. Everyone is there for the same thing, which is to work out really hard, lift weights, or as I say to myself, pick up heavy things and put them down. Today is my last full day in Oxford. I'm going to do another drop off this afternoon of items and then, and then I think, then I think I'm just down to the things I'm taking on the plane. Today in post-workout meals, microwave rice and super healthy sardines. I'm just trying to eat what is in my cupboard now before I leave. So it's sardines and rice and sesame oil and soy sauce and then I just mush it up. On my last night in town, I'm taking myself to see the Eternals at my favorite movie theater, which is super fancy. So here we go. Just taking the last of my donation stuff to the British Heart Foundation. This is some John Lewis plates and some Emperor Bridgewater mugs that I really wanted to keep, but I couldn't pack. It wouldn't fit in my luggage, so sadly, I have to donate it, but hopefully, they'll go to a good cause. Good morning, you guys. It is Tuesday and it is my moving day. My anxiety level is like up here today, like so high. I woke up at four o'clock in the morning feeling like, you know that feeling when you're just like, I don't wanna be awake, but I'm awake, so I'm awake. And this morning I cleared out my entire apartment, sent all the things that need to be recycled to the recycling and everything that needed to go to the dumpster, to the dumpster, which, was an ordeal. It is just about 8 a.m. right now. I just took the screens off of my bedroom window. This is something that I didn't realize would become a thing until I moved into this apartment. Most windows in homes in the UK don't seem to have screens. In New York, where I grew up, there were screens on every window. But here, even though there are lots of like spiders and bees and wasps flying around outside of my apartment, there are no screens. So I actually installed my own temporary screen and before I leave, I had to take it down. So I just did that. I am going to give you guys a little apartment tour of my empty apartment. When you walk into my apartment, the living area is directly to the right. It is a combo kitchen and dining and living room and there is a balcony out there that looks right out onto the back of the Westgate Center, which is a giant mall. On the balcony, there's table and two chairs. I really have not used this balcony at all, all year because, and you can't tell just from looking, but it is infested with spiders. I've actually tried to sweep away the cobwebs for like weeks at a time, but they just keep on coming back because spiders are like tough little guys. Anyway, I made a deal with them that they could have the balcony as long as they don't come inside. And so far we've been pretty good about that deal. They have not crossed the threshold. 
The sofa that came with the apartment is a pull-out sofa bed. The rug came with the apartment. Almost all of the main furniture came with the apartment. Over here is where I put the TV on top of the storage console. Inside of the console, I put my printer. And this shelf was originally in a different corner. I moved it over there to be less obtrusive. In this room is the combo washer dryer. I don't really know what that thing at the top is, but the washer dryer was pretty fantastic to have. This is the kitchen. It features a built-in sink, not too much counter space, which was fine. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. And there was a halogen cooktop. This is not my preferred type of cooktop. This was a little bit challenging to work with because it has this feature where if even like one drop of water falls on the cooktop while you are cooking, like if you lift a spoon out of a pot and like a drop of water hits the surface, the entire cooktop shuts down and you have to restart the whole thing. I understand it's a safety feature, but not my favorite kind of cooktop. There is an oven. There is a microwave. I have never used a microwave more than I did in this apartment. There's a small dishwasher, which I never use because I actually don't know how to use a dishwasher. And there is plenty of storage. There is under sink storage. There's over the sink storage. And there is one additional cabinet. Over the stove, there's also a tiny bit of storage on the sides of the extractor fan. And the refrigerator is built in to match the cabinets. Unfortunately, my refrigerator has been broken since August 31st. So I have lived without a refrigerator for three months. My landlord is not concerned <laughs> with fixing the fridge. All in all, the living space here is pretty decently sized. I was very, very pleased with it. There is one additional closet in the common area and it's okay for storage. I used to keep a couple of suitcases in here, but because a lot of the electrical stuff is in here and like the main, you know, power switches, I was nervous about keeping anything else in here. So right now it's just my Swiffer and a mop. I don't actually know what this white box is at the top, but it does make a lot of noise. The bathroom is just to the left of the door, and like most British bathrooms, there are no electrical points inside the bathroom because in the UK, electricity is 240 volts, so it's quite high voltage. It's a pretty standard bathroom. There is a long bathtub, a sink and toilet, and this is probably one of the best storage features, a super deep drawer. I'm leaving some of my dividers here for the next tenant because I had to buy some. There's also a heated towel rack, which I never really used. I never turned it on. I find that every time I turn this on in hotel rooms, I accidentally burn myself. So I just left it off. Right to the left of the living area is the bedroom. The bedroom here is a really good size. The ironing board there was here when I moved in. So I'm just leaving it here. And that is a double size bed. The bedroom is actually built exactly for a double size bed. If you can see the outlets on either side are placed exactly the width of a double size bed apart. And the apartment comes with the bed frame and the two side tables and the mattress. I think one of the good things about this is that it is custom built for this size bed. But also, I guess if you own this apartment, it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility in terms of putting a larger bed in here or even getting like a king size or a queen size and like pushing it up against the wall. You'll be blocking a, an outlet over there. This is the main wardrobe type closet for the apartment. It's pretty long and it features a sliding door. These are some of the hangers I'm leaving here. I think this closet has a lot of space. I put a lot of suitcases and things up here. I was able to pile things up down there, which was great. But because this closet was constructed with space in mind, I don't know if you can tell, but this is a standard hanger. Um, I bought these here in England. They're not American. <laughs> They're English standard hangers. And you can tell that they touch the sides of the closet, which means if you are hanging anything that is bulkier than say like a thin shirt, 
it doesn't fit in the closet. So <laughs> it's designed in a strange way. So if you have a coat or something, all my coats I had to hang like diagonally, which takes up additional space. Um, this could have been solved just by, you know, making sure that the closet was wide enough to hold more than, I mean, you can barely move any, you see what I mean. So the backstory with this apartment is that I signed this lease without ever seeing this apartment in person. I moved to England from Hong Kong and I moved in the middle of the pandemic last December. I knew that coming to England, I didn't want to take the risk of arriving here, booking a hotel, and then God forbid, not be able to find an apartment. It takes like a month sometimes to get an apartment here in the UK. But I knew about this building because I've been tracking real estate in Oxford and London for years. And I had read about this building in 2018 when these units went on sale. And I was watching it and I was like, wow, well, this is one of the newest residential developments in the center of town. It's in a fantastic location right behind a mall where there's a supermarket, there's a gym, there are restaurants. And compared to a lot of the older buildings here in town that I'd seen online, I was pretty confident that moving into a newer building was the right decision in this sort of environment and climate. And when I moved in here in December, 2020, I was so happy I made this decision. First, I think the important things to remember is that I moved in the dead of winter, so it was freezing outside. And I was like, wow, this apartment is so warm that I never have to turn the heat on. I'm saving so much money in heat. And because it was in the middle of the pandemic, there were no buses running 24 hours a day because the bus schedules had all been cut. So it was so quiet outside. Plus there were no students in town. So there was no one like wandering around in the middle of the night, screaming drunk. So I would say that this was a great apartment to live in for the first few months of the year until spring hit and the lockdown lifted. And I started to have a couple of epiphanies about this location. By the time May rolled around, I started to realize that living in this apartment, in this building was like living in a sauna next to a highway. It turns out that when the bus schedule picked back up, the road that runs directly in front of this apartment is a major bus thoroughfare. I think like 40 or 50% of all the buses that come in and out of Oxford drive directly in front of this building 24 hours a day. It is so loud starting at around 5 a.m. all the way up until midnight that it's kind of hard to even have my windows open to do work. But because this apartment is so great at retaining heat in the winter, it turns out it is also great at retaining heat all year round. So basically between April and the end of October, it was so hot in this apartment every single day. It was like I was I would sit here, it would be 50 degrees outside, it would be jacket weather, coat weather, and I would be sitting in my apartment sweating but unable to open the windows at night because I couldn't sleep for all the noise. On top of that, this building has some quirks. I think because this building sits on top of the mall parking lot and like maybe, I don't know, technically the, this is part of mall property. They have to run all these safety things in this apartment that I've never experienced anywhere else I've lived. For example, every Wednesday at 10 a.m. the fire alarm goes off in individual apartments in this building. That is just crazy to me. It, always scares me, even if I know that it's gonna happen at 10 a.m. Sometimes it happens on Friday, so mostly on Wednesdays at 10 a.m., but sometimes also on Friday. And apparently this building has a long running problem with its heating system and hot water system. I didn't know about the heating because I never had to turn the heating on. Thank goodness, that was one great thing. In the dead of winter, 2020, 2021, the first few months of the year when it was freezing outside, I would say that collectively there was probably about two and a half or three weeks where there was no hot 
water and no communication no communication from the management company who's like brand is plastered all over the lobby and all over the windows of this building if you called them they wouldn't respond if you email them they wouldn't respond no communication from the landlords that was a little bit annoying speaking of landlords i think one of the key takeaways that i have for myself in this experience is that I really, really prefer renting from a management company that is involved in the managing of the building or like a good management company rather than renting from a private landlord. Now, this is just a personal preference. I have had good landlords in the past. I've had decent landlords. And this time around, I, this landlord was not interested in fixing my refrigerator. So I haven't had a fridge for a quarter of the year. My experience, however, renting from management companies and living in buildings where the management company is very, very good and very on it has been spectacular because when it is a business, there is a system, there are ways to do things, there's processes, and it's a job. So people want to get things fixed. They want to get things done. But if it's a private landlord who's not like a professional landlord, who may or may not only have one property that they're renting out, they may not really understand what it means to be a landlord and that someone else's lifestyle and quality of life is in their hands. I think for me, for example, the fridge thing, it, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was really, really annoying and incredibly expensive to not be able to keep anything refrigerated for three months. But I think like, can you imagine if I had like a kid and I needed to refrigerate things like milk or children's foods, or even if I had to like refrigerate medication, what would I have done for three months with my landlords ignoring me? I don't know. For me, I really took it as an opportunity to buy fresh foods every day and go to the supermarkets just as an excuse to go do something and add something to my routine, which I kind of enjoyed. It was really expensive though and very, very time consuming. And I don't think I would have been able to cope with a broken fridge for three months if I had been, you know, working full time. I think that even if I had decided to stay in Oxford long term, which, you know, I do want to do, when I'm a grown up, <laughs> I'm a grown up now, but when I can afford it, I would like to have a home here for the long term. But even if I had decided to stay longer this time around, I would have moved for sure. I think that this apartment was so expensive because it's a new building, but for me, it was not worth the money. This is a lot of stuff, so much stuff. said it's a completely full flight which is terrifying but that's because the u.s started letting people back into the country yesterday so hopefully everything goes smoothly went to the supermarket this morning. It feels good to be able to shop like a normal person with a working refrigerator. Look, I'm so excited about my half sour New York pickles. Got a few things, salad dressing, a rotisserie chicken. Just like really happy to be like a normal person with a normal working fridge. The little things that count. What's up guys? <laughs> Pay no attention to the mess behind me. I am deep in the throes of unpacking. The past few days, I've almost felt like I'm a time traveler that's just landed in 2021 because my apartment here was all stuff from like three years ago. And then I went away for three years, accumulated an entire new material life, new clothes, new homewares, just new stuff, like new computers, just new things. And I have tried to now integrate 2021 with 
20, tw like 2018, 2019. So there's a lot of work to do in terms of clothing storage. I am also preparing to go back into an office on Monday. So I did go out and get a few things today. I am obsessed with this. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this, but I want to show you guys. I picked this up at Bed Bath & Beyond today. It's by a brand called WNP. I don't know this brand. And it's, a, it's called Porter. And it's covered in this silicone stuff, which I guess, you know, protects it. It's, but it's a plastic lunch container. But what I love about it is that it looks like a rice bowl. So I think that I will be taking rice to work with me for lunch and what's great about this is that it's deep enough to hold like a good portion of rice and then you can put you know like chicken or fish or vegetables on top and the whole thing is leak proof and you could just take this and throw it into your bag so the past 48 hours have been kind of a blur mostly because i'm extremely jet lagged yesterday was just a ton of errand running just to make sure i had things like food in my house and soap and toilet paper just you know stuff like that and then i went to go see my brother my sister-in-law my niece and my nephew in the evening which was so great and i brought the kids like a bunch of like cute little toys from england i have had an energy drink today so right now i'm drinking a sparkling water blueberry pomegranate flavored beverage i love drinks that come in cans and bottles this is a real problem because now i'm back in new york america's full of colorful exciting drinks that come in cans and bottles so i also bought this at gmc today it's a calming lavender sparkling drink and honestly i don't have high expectations for a lavender soda but i thought it would be nice to try something that you know promises some calming effect, so. I have a meeting and I'm in Soho. Happy Friday. Just finished at the gym and I got a protein shake back on my schedule. Okay, it's about to like thunderstorm outside, which is why it's so dark in my apartment at like two o'clock in the afternoon. So I booked myself a facial because I haven't had one in like three years. And I'm gonna try to get to the spa before it starts to pour. So I have my mama, wish me luck. This is my Saturday, you guys. I'm trying to run errands and be a normal human being instead of just sitting around and watching Netflix. Although I did just watch Shang-Chi again for the second time. I love the movie so much. They have the best animals in that film. Okay, it's Sunday and I'm with my niece and nephew. They're taking tennis lessons. So we're at the USTA and yeah, signing off here. I'm gonna leave a link below for our podcast that we just launched with the mayor of Los Angeles office about AAPI issues. Um, check it out if you have a chance and I will see you next week.